In this episode, we are going to culture ourselves with the literary masterwork of GoBots Race to the Stars. So, stick around! and dorkettes and welcome to it came from my side of the laundry room my name's rob and in this episode we are returning to an old segment that was on the show a long long time ago now i have kind of rethought my way of doing this segment and uh, forgive me for saying segment when it's the sole thing of the episode but Back when I began, it came from my side of the laundry room. It was a show with multiple segments. Over time, I discovered that those segments were starting to run very long. So, over time, I just shortened it to one thing. So, this one thing will be a book review? Book? Look at a book? I don't know. Reading Rainbow? Whatever you want to call it. Back then, I called it Shelf Life, and until I can find a better title, that's what this will be called. And, yeah, I'm thinking of different nostalgic-like titles for this book thing, because what I aim to do is look at all these great 80s kids' books that I have laying around the laundry room. Some from my personal collection growing up, some of them from church rummage sales and yard sales that I found over the years because people don't realize the nostalgic gold that they have in these books and they just blow them out like one for a quarter. Heck, this church rummage sale I went to, it's fill up a bag for whatever you feel like donating. So I give them a couple bucks and I go home with nostalgic gold, like I said. And we'll be looking at those books over time if you all enjoy this. So... I mean, we'll see how this goes. This is the inaugural relaunching of Shelf Life. So without further ado, let's run the intro. Okay, folks, here we go. GoBots, Race to the Stars. Published by Golden Books under their Heroic Champions line, which, up until finding this, I only had Masters of the Universe titles within this line. So I was super excited to find this, and I found it at a church rummage sale that had tables upon tables of books. And it was, fill up a bag for whatever you feel like donating. So I filled up a bag with total awesome 80s nostalgic greatness, and gave them a few bucks. So, yeah, GoBots, Race to the Stars. Now, it goes without saying that GoBots gets a bad rap, unfortunately, but to me, I had fun with what limited GoBot toys I had growing up. I mean, I did not have many Transformers or GoBots because, I mean, Transformers were expensive. GoBots weren't, but I just never got that many of them for some reason. The ones I did have, I love, and I would love to get them again. Just the certain ones that I had. And there's some awesome ones I didn't have that I'd love to have as well. But anyway, here we go. GoBots, Mighty Robots, Mighty Vehicles, Race to the Stars. And I don't know how we'll do this. We'll kind of learn as we go along. But we can see this awesome picture here with leader one that scooter dude the awesome base that walked around see i even forget their names so hopefully we learn them as we read along and like i said this is a relaunching of this segment if you will called shelf life we might rename it as we go along or just leave it at that because they're from my shelf and this is our life and kind of goes together shelf life and they have a shelf life because as we see this was made in 1985 by golden books 
Now, Golden Books Classic did some great, great books and uh, these little guide books that I still have about animals and reptiles and such. But anyway, we're here to talk about GoBots. And I'm sorry I did not talk about it too much in the, you know, ramping up to this section, but I didn't want to give away any of the goodness. So here we go. We see the bad guys here. We have Psykill. I forget what this lady robot's name is, and the helicopter dude, which I actually did have. Always wanted Psych Hill, but I had the helicopter guy and he was pretty awesome. Surprisingly, he does not have his, you know, helicopter blades here, which he could use as a weapon. He's opting more for shooting blasts out of his hands. And this seems to be based on the cartoon. And sadly, I don't have a lot of memories of the cartoon. I remember it airing like Sunday mornings on, you know, a syndicated channel, and I didn't really stumble upon it that often. But here we go. We'll just read this for, figure out what's going on. On an asteroid far out in space, three guardians from the planet Gobotron and their Earth allies, Captain Matt Hunter and cadets Nick Burns and A.J. Foster, begin construction on a secret base. We better call it a day's work, said Matt. The Daredevil Astro Corps captain. <laughs> let me let me back up a minute. We better call it a day's work, said Matt, the Daredevil Astro Corps captain. Nick's computer designs and AJ's expert space use plans have given us a good start on the Guardian base. Indeed, said the massive Leader One. We'll be able to develop weapons against the renegade Gobots in complete secrecy. Here he is riding the scooter dude on space, this awesome red sports car that I remember but can't remember his name, and of course, Leader One. And here's their human allies. I suggest we return to Earth now, said Matt. We don't want to be missed. Scoot <laughs> scooter and Turbo. You know, I should have remembered Turbo because it's quite generic. But anyway... The command center, which will return to Earth. Back at Astro Corp's headquarters, the renegade's secret ally, Professor Braxis, watched the heroes return. What are they up to, he wondered. I've seen their comings and goings for days now. Inside his lab, Braxis hatched another evil scheme. I'm certain that Hunter and his stupid brat friends are constructing a secret base. Braxis raved to himself. I've got a plan that will enable the renegades and me to find it. What an evil, evil fellow he looks like. But he has a comfy castle-like chair in his lab. Kind of odd. So anyway, this dude apparently uh, fires a ray into this warehouse, and with it, he can pass through. The ray separated the very atoms of the wall, allowing Braxis to walk right into the high-security building. My pass-through, sir, works to perfection, Brax Braxis said to himself with glee. And with the equipment I steal from here, I can construct everything I need to further my plans. And there he is, pushing stuff through the <coughs> pass through -izer, as it is known, this cart of bric-a-brac. And he contacts Psykill, the renegade commander. Next morning, they show up. Hey, our stuff's gone. Ah, oh no, someone's locked me in. The pass through Zizer thing, he drives a truck through this wall. And then he meets up with the renegade Gobots. Psykill, Crasher, and Cop Tur. Their only desire was conquest. Soon, Braxis told them, we will have the location of the Guardian's secret base. What a plan I have, gloated Braxis. With this device I stole and your super knowledge, we can construct the perfect spy, a robot, Matt Hunter. Back on the base. Hey, what's up? 
Ha ha ha, they are fooled by the robot Matt Hunter. He's like throwing arms, like, yo, what's up, Matt? I think it's time to go to the secret base, the robot Matt said. We have much work to do. Nick is so happy to see Matt that he doesn't notice how strange Matt is acting. Though AJ, I better keep alert. Now, Turbo and Scooter here. And I remember Scooter talking like, oh no, talking all weird. See, it's that kind of stuff that doesn't let a cartoon stay good. It's those funny voices. Like the Cops cartoon. I love that cartoon and I loved re-watching it, but some of the voices of the villains particularly really just grind my gears while watching it. But anyway, here we go. I hope no renegades find our secret base, the robot Matt said stiffly. That's it, cried AJ. Matt, set off the alarm. Suddenly, AJ grabbed the front of the robot Matt's suit. Great moons, Nick cried. This isn't Matt. It's only a robot double programmed to act like Matt. How did you know, AJ? asked Leader One. The way he talked, explained AJ, and the fact that he called the Guardian base secret base. We are fortunate to have such a good detective, said Leader One, one who acts on her suspicions. Thanks, said AJ. Now come on, let's go back to Earth and find the real Matt. Look at that, just yanked open his chest. What if, what if he wasn't a robot? That could cause some serious harm. Oh, Leader One, AJ, Nick, it's about time you found me because I'm getting ready to vacuum something. Ooh, think about the psychological ramifications of operating on yourself even though it's a robot that's still really freaky i think i would be kind of messed up make a sanity roll if you're playing cthulhu anyway here the evil renegades are attacking the moon base out of the darkness of space the renegades attacked they're already attacking said matt eject my robot self as the link between the renegades and their tracking site i think i can help us knock out the whole system so they launched his robot self into space and it blows up. Again, psychological ramifications of doing damage to something that looks like you. Wow, this guy is hardy because I don't think I could handle that. At Matt's direction, Leader One directed a blast at the inert robot. Energy bolts shot out from it in two directions. We'll have to destroy the Guardian base, said Matt. The renegades must keep from learning our scientific secrets. The two bolts of energy streamed across the heavens. One made a direct hit on the Guardian base. The Gobots, who had taken the battle outside, were blown free of the wreckage. The other bolt traveled over the signal waves from the robot. Matt, all the way to Braxis's tracking site on Earth. Braxis escaped just before the building was blown into the sky. Back on Earth, the humans say goodbye to their Gobot friends for the time being. I'm glad Scooter and Turbo escaped the explosion without a scratch, said Matt. Unfortunately, so did the Renegades. You can bet we'll be hearing from them again before long. But our new base will have a way to jam tracking devices so the next battle won't be a surprise attack. And with luck, said AJ, laughing, we won't have to blast someone who looks like Matt in order to win. Ha 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 ha. And again, awesome artwork here. But look, She's making a joke out of destroying something that looks like her friend. These people are psychologically hardy because, yeah, I'd have some hang-ups over destroying a robot that looked like someone I knew, even though I knew it was a robot. It would still be weird. Anyway, the Gobots and these dudes are, yeah, they're off the chain. But anyway, <sighs> I hope you liked this little look back at GoBots Race to the Stars. Anyway, I hope to do a couple more episodes like this. Maybe a few. Maybe a lot. I don't know, depending on how you guys like it. Because I have a lot of 80s kids books that I would love to look at with y'all. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Back to me. Okay, folks. I hope you enjoyed that relaunching of the segment Shelf Life. And like I said, down the road, we may rename it, rebrand it, because 
the shelf life started out as just a let's look at certain books I have around the laundry room because I have a ton of them and some of them are kind of interesting and I want to share that. Now this is morphed more into let's just look at these old nostalgic kids books that we grew up with and see how awesome and sometimes weird they are like this one. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them and I love getting back to everybody. And if you're new around here and you enjoyed this or any of the episodes that YouTube is recommending down here, please hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, you will be notified whenever there's a new episode. So anyway, thanks for watching. Keep being rad and stay dorky.